I just want to say that right up front so you don't think that I'm standing here saying, I'm awesome, we're awesome, you're not. Because you're all awesome. And this is going to be a little bit later in this presentation. First of all, though, we have a disclaimer. We really believe in our code of ethics at our company. Who doesn't? I just retook the training again a week or two ago, and there's a very strong statement that we have a few official spokespeople for the company, and I'm not one of them. So what my ask is, if you tweet, please do not say, Kim Glover says Technip FMC is, because we're a public company, and I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and find out that somehow I made a material statement that affected the stock price. <laughs> Staying in the room means that you accept the bilateral agreement. We're all good? All right. So now that I've said that, let me tell you a little bit about us. Technip FMC is a company in oil and gas that merged around the beginning of January 2017. Basically, our customers are oil and gas producers. Anybody in the room in the oil and gas, by the way? A few? Ah, thank you. Willem, you are one of our customers. And so uh, please don't be tweeting. <laughs> Thank you for being our customer. Uh, you can imagine that in a merged company, knowledge management, knowledge sharing is more important now than ever. Really important to us. But it's important to all of your companies too, right? Okay. Also in our culture, we have a focus on our core values. At the beginning of every meeting, if it's four people or more in an hour or more, we talk for a few moments about something that relates to our core values. We started doing this a few years ago with external meetings as well because we figure we want to embody the values. So today's take five moment, that's what we call them, take five for core values, is about social learning. My title was read out by Donna earlier and it now includes the word social learning and we really believe that social learning and knowledge management are very connected. Social learning theory has been around for a long time and I've made a few people grumpy um, by them saying, well, that's not exactly what social learning is about. But social learning is changing, just like the world is changing, just like KM is changing. And I like these couple of definitions up here, and I think we're doing it this week and in this room. We are participating with others to make sense of new ideas. I saw Dave Snowden speak earlier today. Whoa, I was blown away by the new ideas. You were too, Linda, right? And also, we're producing a change in understanding that goes beyond the individual to the community. We are a community. This room is a community. KM is a community. So we got three topics to talk about today. First of all, I'm going to give you some highlights about our program. Jane said, make sure and talk about your program. People are going to want to know what it is that y'all do. So then we're going to go into some of the key ingredients of awesome sauce, of KM awesomeness. And finally, we're going to end with a group recognition that awesome takes a village. That okay with you all? Let's get started. So our original program in 2010 had a very long mission statement that we were able to shrink into some key ideas that you see here. We were about connecting people, making sure they could find information that was relevant to them that they needed to do their jobs, pushing information to them, which wasn't as easy in 2010 as it is now, not that it's easy now, Everything we did, we did for business value, because even though KM is fun, that's not why we do it. And we have a culture of continuous improvement and listening around KM. Well, something happened. We started with communities of practice, and they're people, right? Communities are people. And we organized those communities around business areas, and we started to nurture and support them. And those communities soon realized we could help them do more stuff. As communities do, they focused on wicked problems. Dave Snowden said not to say wicked. What are we supposed to, intractable problems. Um, and they realized if they could get some facilitated support around these problems that they were tackling, as a community, they could leverage their strengths, we leverage our strengths, and we started expanding our program right away. So I will say that this is the key slide about the program. It's a lot of words, but don't worry, I'm gonna tell you some stories. And uh, we call it the stair-step slide. So in 2010, 2011, we did, as many companies do, started our knowledge management initiative with communities of practice, which over time grew to about 90 in a company that was between 15,000 and 20,000, depending on the price of oil. That's another story. 
Um, the leader of knowledge management was an engineer who'd been at the company for over 20 years, and he had 33 patents, and he came to KM directly from the Office of Innovation, Technology Innovation. He worked with some consultants back then in 2010, 2011. They had a really strong governance, and they put these communities of practice into place, and they took off like a house of fire, as my grandmother would say. And it began to resonate with the company. This is the way that we connect to each other. But we also saw back then, now I wasn't there quite yet, that that findability goal was not being achieved all that well. Um, I'll just say, and please don't tweet this either, our intranet was kind of crap, and finding things with search was kind of not easy. And so the very next thing that we did was to put in place a better search tool and hire a full-time search and taxonomy expert and to develop a controlled vocabulary associated with all of our technologies and our parts. And we did 90 workshops through the world to put this in place. And guess what? Findability went through the roof. And it became one of the only places on the internet that people trusted. And we started using our communities for things beyond what communities or practice are really for. It was kind of like a faux intranet. That kind of merged, uh, turned out to be one of the later evolutions. By the way, I'm halfway into this already, but what I thought would be neat is as we uh, talk about what we do, if there are those in the audience who have that as part of their KM program, if you could just raise your hand briefly and maybe look around at each other. So uh, communities of practice, who has communities of practice? A lot of people, excellent. And um, search and taxonomy expertise on your team? Excellent. Okay, cool. So now you'll know um, to raise your awesome hands uh, as we go through the rest of it if there's something that you also do. So in 2013, we put in what I would call our first major bold expansion. All those communities were doing so well, but they were actually creating answers to those wicked problems. And where do you put the answer? Where do you put the contextual information that has come through these discussions, through these people interacting in work groups? Has anyone ever tried to mine information from a discussion forum like it's a knowledge base? It doesn't work. So we put in place a wiki. And the wiki was, uh, had moderators organized, and it really, really helped. Now what happened also in 2013 is because that wonderful, amazing, person who started KM had done so well, he was tapped to lead the new corporate university. That created an opening for a KM lead, and I got to join the company, which was really cool. That connection meant that the university and the knowledge management program could uh, leverage the synergies, and boy, did we do it. And I would love to say that we were smart enough to have planned the wiki to be a, a sort of a central part for that, but no, it was, it was uh, serendipity the wiki content started being used in formal training courses. Very easy for people to just point to that. And it also made the social learning a lot easier because why does formal training stuff all have to be somewhere someone has to register to get to it? Why can't we have that knowledge available immediately? So that bold expansion continues to pay off. Then in 2014, all those thought bubbles that you saw where they were requesting from the communities this kind of support, we decided to formalize that. So all of our team, which at that time was between seven and nine, depending on whether or not corporate communications had stolen an employee from me lately, um, was trained as facilitators. I highly recommend professional facilitation training for anyone in KM, for anyone in business, actually. It really helped us. And we put in place a series called Experts Explain, which is like a set of internal TED Talks. Those are recorded, and the recordings go in the wiki and become available for social learning and for formal training courses or informal. And we also put in place a survey service. So we see surveys as part of knowledge management. It's a way to capture input and turn it into actionable outcomes, right? And we licensed a software platform called Think Tank, and we decided to call that facilitated collaboration. There are other tools out there. I'm not promoting, promoting one tool above another, but it is a way to turn those workshops where you have the big pieces of paper around the room on the wall and all the stickies into something that you can do virtually and much more quickly. And that became a real staple in our knowledge management outcome awesomeness. Um, in 2015, 
we had another big expansion. So when I was rehearsing this with the team, they said, Kim, you didn't say why we had the big expansion in 2015. We went to a team size of 27 in this expansion. And I thought, I didn't say why. Why actually was that? And it's because that social learning thing took off, that the outcomes from people using this stuff in the wiki and from the communities we saw as a company we wanted to be a learning organization and ratcheting up the resources there really helped. So we moved some people away from learning and into knowledge management. We had the five groups you see there, the collaboration team who managed the communities of practice, the facilitation team, a team of three who did full-time facilitation uh, for all different kinds of workshops, the uh, multimedia team who did small e-learnings and also videos, uh, fancy corporate vi videos to promote core values, but also uh, cute little quick vi videos to, uh, to show and display behaviors. And they taught others, just as the rest of the teams did, how to create their own. Guess where the videos ended up? In the wiki. So we've got that social learning ecosystem thing going on here. We have a team called Knowledge Solutions, which was mostly engineers and understood our real technical uh, knowledge and information and could sit down with the business and help them design the right knowledge transfer approach. They manage the wiki. And then the final team is knowledge architecture, where those really bright people who have uh, cross-functional skills and can understand IT as well as people are. That's where the search and taxonomy expertise is. That's where we have a lot of SharePoint expertise. And nowadays, uh, Office 365 expertise as well. And they also manage the surveys. And in terms of developing us and our skills, the year before, we had become trained facilitators. This year we did a project called Consulting on the Inside and started thinking of ourselves as professional internal consultants. 2016 was, well, I went too fast. 2016 was the year that we reaped the benefit of that big, bold expansion. We did projects like crazy in all kinds of areas and we added on some things that you can see there. The facilitation team started doing process mapping. The, uh, we learned from our friends at Goodyear about knowledge sweeps and the knowledge, the knowledge solutions team did some of those. We also expanded our facilitation. We got some responsibility or the responsibility for the crappy intranet and started putting governance in place and better search approaches, et cetera. And we continued that partnership with the corporate university and really focused on becoming what our CEO wanted, which was a learning organization. And then boom, we had a merger, January 2017. And we realized as the KM leadership team, we've got a challenge here. We're merging with a company twice our size. They don't have a formal knowledge management program and they don't know about us. So we got to work, we created, created a quick piece of collateral that sort of illustrated what KM could do within a merger. Um, APQC has a really good paper on that, by the way. And Linda, I think you were uh, interviewed for it. Um, it's very good, very good. Um, and so we were just doing projects all year that supported the merger. We did some special videos. We did a, uh, a big e-learning that helped people from the different parts of the company uh, learn what the other part, the merged part, did. It was a busy year and it was a great year. And then, boom! the ultimate validation, we got the 2017 KM World Reality Award. Wow, right in the middle of our merger too. I mean, wh wow, it was really, really awesome, if you will. And then we came into 2018, and I'll be honest, it's been a challenging year because there was no integration track before the merger and into the first year of the merger for learning, much less KM. So while we were super busy and we were providing all these services, we didn't see the path to getting announced and being sort of official. I still don't have my new business cards. I got my new title about a month ago, which is really great. The cards will be here soon. And so we thought, this is going to be a challenge. Also, the company really wanted to get learning done first, and we'll launch KM in early 2019. So we spent this year of 2018 supporting a huge new learning strategy project and a new learning management system. And it wasn't until I was putting this last step on the stair together for this presentation that I realized, wow, we could put a star on this year too. I'm really, really surprised because we have done some new cool stuff. We've got a chat bot that we've been working on that's just about to go live. We have um, done some, a, a huge idea jam which really helped the company make some decisions about the culture in a big, big uh, division that we have. We have a new podcast 
which uh, is taking off. It's got a couple thousand subscribers now. And even though our team size now is 12, because learning and corporate communications during reorg stole huge amounts of people from us, we've done some really cool stuff. We're moving our communities of practice to the, uh, and the wiki to the cloud, and we have Office 365 expertise. And there's one more thing on there. Oh, we put some structure to the video portal, and we can also provide cultural support. So it's been kind of an awesome journey, and there it is in, in, in one slide. But now we're going to move into the next bit of the presentation. I hope I'm not boring you, because it is right after lunch. Do I need to like do a dance or anything? OK, I don't see any sleeping. The next part of the presentation is about the ingredients for KM Awesome Sauce. That's right. And our first ingredient to our KM Awesome Sauce is the importance of being agile. Now, as you probably picked up from Kim, the KM program at FMC Technologies was pretty advanced, right? We had an award-winning program, and we had unprecedented adoption. Something like 70 to 75% of our employees used our platform. And the executive sponsorship was ridiculous, off the charts. Our CEO had declared our communities a practice platform and our wiki two parts of a three-pronged approach to turning our organization into a learning organization. But all that changed in January of 2017. We merged with a company that was double our size and had no enterprise knowledge management program. Now it was a curveball, to say the least, but we saw it as an opportunity to create a culture of knowledge management. Let me explain. The first thing we did was mobilize. We assessed our product offering. And then we linked our solutions to individual merger activities. And those activities, there were vast. There were tons of them. And honestly, they were slightly painful. Has anyone in here been through a merger before? Show of hands. Oh, so you all understand, right? Everything is brand new. You have new policies, new processes, new people, new teams. But most importantly, you have to get two different cultures to work together to create one successful company. But we found a home for KM in that chaos. What you see up here is the menu that was circulated to the top 200 managers in our organization. And this menu helped to plant the seeds of the KM culture within the organization. Because we were going to use what we do to accelerate integration. This process also helped us to train all of these new people about what is knowledge management. It allowed us to actually demonstrate the benefits that can be obtained if you use our solutions or tools and our practices. And it helped us with that culture, because we know culture is going to top strategy any day of the week. We could use that culture to drive our new corporate strategy. And we were able to do that because we could turn on a dime because we were agile. So that's the first ingredient. The second ingredient is all about change management. Now, change management is a natural derivative of agility. Let me illustrate using the bridge. And you're going to have to pay attention because I worked really hard on this animation. <laughs> OK? So what's the purpose of change management? We need to get people from one place to another. We need to get them to cross the bridge. But you know they're not going to go alone. You have to meet them where they are, where they do their work, right? You might have to, oh, I bounced in already. You have to grab them by the hand and escort them over the bridge. Wait for it. Hey. Of course, you might have to make one trip, two trips, three trips, even four. 
You have to customize the messaging so that you can articulate the benefit that's most meaningful to those employees. Don't be surprised if you don't get 100%, right? You're always gonna have the stragglers. But you hope the momentum that you've created by bringing people across that bridge will bring the stragglers along. Let me give you some real life examples. Literally, in the last two weeks, we rolled out a new approach to learning to 37,000 people located in 48 different places around the world. Countries. Countries. Yeah. Oh yeah, countries. <laughs> Kim led the change management effort. That's why she's a little tired. She's been working really hard for months, right? What I want to point out though is look at the combination of engagement strategies that were used to bring people across the bridge. And that's an abbreviated list. And it was all done in multiple language and distributed around the world. Another example is Teams. We're rolling out Microsoft Teams. And that's my project. I'm doing that change management. Just like Kim, I'm using an integrated approach with multiple strategies. One of them is that poster over there. We did a series of open houses in most of our large offices around the world where we can articulate the benefit of why our employees should use Teams. Now this leads me to my final message. By being a change management expert, it opens the doors to new projects. You meet new people, you uncover new needs. And if you're agile enough, you can respond efficiently and you can leave them wanting more. Oh, thanks so much, Tammy. Hi, everybody. I'd like to follow up on what Tammy well, and Kim have said. And my colleagues know that I affectionately refer to them as a celebrity nickname, Tim. But um, <laughs> because they really do have so much important things to say, um, I just wanted to pick up on the idea that Kim presented in 2014. Um, knowledge management products and services started to tune into the idea of the importance of becoming internal consultants. The importance of beginning to converse with different stakeholders, different business units across a global organization and really tune in to identify their problems and understand what they had to say. And I'll go ahead and set that down. Understanding what people have to say, really understanding the core root of their problem might not be the same thing that they come to you with. And so getting expectations out is very important. And everybody, everybody is let down when expectations are not met. I think it's just fun. I love the big picture. Sure, baby, hold back by Say Anything on Amazon Music. Most parents are tired of hearing Baby Shark. <laughs> And that's the face of unmet expectation. Baby Shark by Pink Floyd, starting now on Amazon Music. So I'm pretty certain I've not seen anyone on executive leadership's team face do that. I don't know if any of you have, but congratulations if you have. You, you met those expectations. The other, the other point of getting into, oh, let me move away from that. <laughs> the other point of getting into internal consultancy is to really go beyond just, okay, I understand your problem, and now I'm going to throw some technology at you, right? It's going to be wonderful. Have, has anyone ever experienced just, you know, the IT solution, the big IT investment that kind of fails to meet expectations and we don't get that happy executive leadership face? Well, uh, one way that, w that we can overcome that is to work together, move beyond that very first issue 
to understanding the core root of the problem, exploring technological capabilities so that we can develop, collaboratively develop a solution that will be both practical and have buy-in and adoption across the groups. Um, one example I can give you of this, and um, coming back to the idea that our, our company recently launched a new learning management system a couple of weeks ago. Back in, it was 18 months ago, um, in 2017, one of our colleagues came to us, a program manager, and he said to me, Sarah, I need a nomenclature for instructor-led in e-courses, e-learning courses. Um, how many? Oh, about 3,000. I need you to give me a nomenclature so we can make this thing work. Okay, okay. <laughs> what, what, what is it we're trying to make work? Well, we want people to find it. We want people to use it when we put it in the new system. Ah, so that's when we started to explore. Okay, what are you really asking for? Yes, of course we want people to find and utilize our training. And yes, of course, we want to have a great buy-in. But the real issue was is that we're working to try to determine how to connect systems and how to migrate content. That's a whole different ball of wax. You're peeling back another layer of the onion to really get to the problem. And I think that that is a, a huge benefit of all of us as KM practitioners, considering yourselves internal consultants. We really have the opportunity to get to the bottom, to overcome the hype. I, I know AI, I know you know Alexa and natural language processing and all of these things. You almost can't be in this space without bringing up those buzzwords. Otherwise, you're just boring taxonomist. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> I know that those, those are very valuable tools, but it's a matter of finding what works and being pragmatic for the situation for the stakeholder and for our individual business units. Another example I wanted to, to give you of that is in the end, for, to be considered successful, we really need to follow up. And that's, that's a huge difference between internal consultants and really, really expensive consultants that come in and deliver a solution in head out. <laughs> Internal consultants have to follow up and that's where the greatest value can be recognized for KM practitioners, following up. The example I'm going to give you of this is with one of our quality engineers. He's kind of known as a struggling guy and I'm not even going to try to interpret him or to impression him because my accents are not good, but it's, it's, it's highly adorable. So a quality engineer comes to me and they have a huge problem. They're globally, how do you identify parts, maintainable components, subsystems, systems, units? How do we identify these things across five different major systems, across four different global regions, across multiple, multiple languages? How do we correctly identify these things so that we can determine how to fit them together and how to move forward? Well, I guess it doesn't sound like the start to a very exciting conversation, does it? <laughs> but the first thing we did was ask questions. Well, okay, Frank, what is, it, what is it that you aspire to? What is the most important thing to you? Well, it's, it's an ISO certification. It's, it's ISO. They, they are the authoritative voice. Oh, the, the authoritative voice, a controlled vocabulary? Okay, so what we need to do is determine a way to develop a solution that will implement a controlled vocabulary for project engineers across the globe. Okay, that's great. We have a standard and we can move forward from that. That was a great example of, the, of just a small little way that as KM practitioners, we could kind of unpack a problem and deliver a deliver a solid value that was actionable. I would say six months later, Frank comes back. He says, well, you know, I'm in quality and we are so interested in classifying processes. Is there a way that we can bring people together from across the globe to identify the value of manufacturing processes? 
Well, of course, there, there, there are so many ways to do it. Let's determine what is the most important thing to you. But I feel that that idea of following up, whether it's your customer or your stakeholder returning to you to ask a further question, or you returning to them to find out, hey, how are things going? How's your search going? How are your facilitations? You returning to them also really gives the differentiation. It's, it's the differentiator between KM services, between internal consulting, and other services that deliver the solution. And so I really feel and I hope that each of you take that away as a, a little bit of information and a little bit of reasoning why internal consultancy adds the sass to the KM Awesome Sauce. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. So I want to add to what everyone here has given. I want to bring the next ingredient to our awesome sauce, Working which on. is dun, dun, dun. seem to be locked up. Oh no. Oh. Well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it, and hopefully yeah. our slides come up. Is governance and structure? Whoa, that's in the eyes. So here we go. Here we go. Great. Governance and structure. So governance, when you identify your governance, what you're doing is you're identifying the roles, responsibilities, your authorities, your resources that are going to be used to implement the process, the product, whatever it is that you're working on. And when you identify those things, what it does is it allows you to set up the expectations, what an employee is going to do. Then you set up the process, how they're going to do it and the expected end result. And as you create this, you have a repeatable process that is consistent and gives you the exact deliverable that you're expecting. So what are they gonna do? How are they gonna do it? And this is their end result. So one of the things that we did was we implemented governance on our video portal. So as everyone has said, we merged. We had two companies that were merged together. We had two video portals that we had to combine onto one platform or a tenant. Well, some of the channels that were created had some thought put behind them, had, they were organized, they looked good. But some of them, oh, okay, well, most of them did not. They kind of looked like this. So they're a little bit chaotic. We have um, rough footage. We have colors all over the place. There's no color structure. They, we actually even had a channel called My Videos. Out of 37,000 employees, someone created a My Video channel. You can't really find what you're looking for. There's ambiguous titles. You don't really know what's in some of the channels unless you dig in and realize that's not what you want and come back out. So it's a mess. It's, it's a mess. And what we were able to do was we implemented governance on our, on our video portal. Things like who can create a channel and how will they create it, meaning what nomenclature will they use. We implemented channel uh, categories so that we could lump like information together. We even imp implemented color coding. We all know that color association works, right? If you know that the departments are coded in blue, when you go to the channel, you immediately go to the blue section and you look for the channel or the department that you're looking for. So we implemented a lot of this change and we got rid of some of the garbage channels. You know, the stuff that's rough footage that's, that were channels that were not videos that were ready for public consumption, cleaned all of that up. And now we have what I like to say is a thing of beauty because I'm telling you, there was a lot, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get these portal, this portal into something that looks like this. So my last point is regarding structure and it goes and falls in line with um, making sure that you're, what you're using is fit for purpose. So we had an opportunity to work on uh, one of our recent surveys. As Kim noted, we have surveys as part of KM. And I had an individual who wanted to send a survey out to key executives at our key clients, such as our BPs, our Shells, our Equinors, and they had this great survey written in Word. Word. <laughs> really? Okay. So I really feel sorry for that individual who is going to be responsible for collecting all of these Word documents and somehow try to glean information out of the responses. All the open text fields get some sort of sentiment analysis or word cloud 
Imagine all of the numerical responses that were received trying to probably have to put them manually into Excel and get some sort of chart or graph out of this. So KM, right? We get the right information to the right people at the right time using the right tool, okay? So we took the survey, used a survey platform. I'm sure several, several of y'all have used survey platforms, online services, put it into the right platform that provides us with the metrics and the analysis that we need so that our individual who was needing the survey at any time can go out and get the information. We have graphs, gives him the information that he needs, shows where the hot points are, what are we doing well, what items need to have action taken right away. It's using the right tool. So I just want to say my challenge to you is to try to identify areas within your sphere of influence, your work environment, where you can implement some guidance, some governance, and some structure, and start having your version of the awesome sauce. <laughs> right? All right, so uh, we're gonna get into some fast food now. The very last ingredient we're talking about today for KM Awesome Sauce is innovation. And we have three minutes before we take questions, so we're gonna do this super quick. As I said, we had 27 people and then we had 12. Well, that doesn't mean we can't be hot stuff, right? But you gotta reinvent yourself. Dave Snowden talked about that a little earlier. What is the KM reinvention? We had a workshop. We had cool t-shirts made or cool shirts. We'll share that design with y'all. It is not company branded, by the way. We got all together in Houston, except for our employee in Russia. Uh, we found a way to include him. We actually printed him out and put him in a chair. Um, you can see him there. And we carried him around the room and we did the stickies on the wall. He was very involved. We decided on a product management approach for all of the 34 things that we do in KM. So the members of this team who are having a little fun there are each responsible for various areas. We want to come back next year and tell you how this product management approach to KM is, but it's about empowerment and ownership by the team, not the leader. I don't have to do all the work. I just take the phone calls when they're doing a great job and the rest of the team. And we're going to have that big relaunch in Q1 2019, and maybe we'll do some cool stuff that we're learning from you here. So the final bit of the presentation is the acknowledgement that Awesome is a village. All these things we talked about today are dependent on people and culture. You're going to succeed mightily with KM if it fits the people and it fits the culture, or you're going to fail miserably if it doesn't fit the people and it doesn't fit the culture. Believe me, I know. We've had miserable failures before. We don't talk about them at conferences because you might tweet. Um, so we have just a, a few things to say to you about our, maybe oh, not. Sorry. We no, each have a sentence. I thought we were going to, sorry. No, uh, as far as governance goes, it has to be fit for purpose. It has to be fit for the people that you're working with. And it absolutely has to be fit for the culture. Change management, it's about meeting the people where they are. Innovation is about being forward thinking, having a safe to fail environment and a culture of trust. And agility is about people, you and I, being adaptive and responsive. And finally, internal consulting is about meeting with the people, analyzing the gaps, designing collaboratively, designing a solution that will be able to give us a good, not only return on investment, but moving beyond dollars and cents in time, a good return on expectation. Okay, so it also requires sponsorship, a great team, and great relationships all across the business from the top floor to the shop floor. And that is our last slide coming on now. We also want to acknowledge this village. This is a KM village. This is a community. We stand on your shoulders. We've learned so much from all of you. So we want to do a quick little exercise. Okay, anyone who has done a knowledge sharing session with us, could you please stand up if we have um, gotten together on a phone call or in a Yep. Please, please yeah. stay standing. Yeah, and stay standing, yep. Excellent, stay standing, y'all. Stay standing. <laughs> you're, you're, you don't really follow the rules, do you? <laughs> Just kidding. All of you who have learned something from us, um, at a conference, attended one of our sessions, had us attend yours, please stand up. Including Not including this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was, go ahead. Okay, so look at the individuals that are standing up. Those that are standing up, y'all who are sitting, have a look at them. Is, is there anyone here who from an individual, individual who is standing, you have shared something with? 
and had learned from, or they have learned something from you? If so, please go ahead and stand up. All right. Okay, fantastic. How many of us belong to knowledge management or knowledge sharing groups that meet regularly? This can be outside of the organization, maybe within the community. How many belong to more than one? Raise your hand, more than two. Give me spirit fingers if you okay. belong to a whole list of things. <laughs> okay, and then the final one would be, stand up if you are learning from each other, us, anyone this week. So please, everyone stand up. <laughs> and give yourselves a hand because this is how you win awards. You listen and learn from other people. So we want you to continue to add to the KM Canon so we can learn from you. Thank you. Okay, now you can. We've got three minutes for some special learning by questions. So who has a question that they would like to ask? Yes, right here. Are you guys tracking your real time like social learning? No. Okay, do you keep track of any, like a, with a transcript of all the learning that colleagues are going through? Yes. Okay. And uh, the reason I'm not saying more, I'm not trying to be cute. We have a brand new learning management system and an old wiki that's just being pulled into the, the cloud. So if you ask me this in three months, I'll go like this and tell you how fancy it is and how we love it. But right now, we're in an interim evolutionary stage, being very agile. Next question. It's hard to see. Yes, right here. How do you uh, separate between what you do and what IT does? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Separation between ID, IT and KM. Partner, partner. It, partnering with the KM team is good business and we have great relationships and we partner. Sometimes there's overlap, but we sit together, we talk, we plan together, we have agile sprints and all those things. And they love us and we love them. They're the reason that Tammy got asked to lead teams. They know they don't do that kind of stuff, but we do. So it's not really a differentiation. It's just overlapping Venn diagrams where people excel in their areas. Another question? <coughs> yes, right here. I, mine was very simple. I, I saw a knowledge sweep on your um, slide. I don't know what that is. Um, What's a knowledge Jim sweep? Jim is with Goodyear, and he can give you such a better uh, explanation <laughs> afterward. Jim. Jim. Um, Jim, right there with the big shoulders. <laughs> the mighty Jim. And I, we will tell you, it, it, they do it better than we do. We, we copied them, but we kind of dumbed it down a little bit. So he's, he's the guru. Yeah. Last question. I saw. Uh, probably not one of the most important ones, but I'm interested in knowing what a bathroom memo is. A bathroom memo. Didn't you have that up there? <laughs> oh, oh, right. <laughs> to the back of this stall that says, hey, we're having a blood drive today. Be sure and go down and give blood. That would be a bathroom menu. Menu, but I didn't know what it was either. Our ad agency that we worked with, they're the one that added that to my vernacular. Okay, so and unfortunately, this, this session has to come to an end. So please join me in thanking our presenters for their energy, their passion, and all their knowledge. You're awesome. Oh, you're awesome. 15 minute break and we'll begin again.